Good morning. It's me talking about developing a winning mindset on LinkedIn. So today I am going to be for the next 30, 40 minutes or so, um, we'll be talking to you about developing a winning mindset on LinkedIn. Now, when I was creating this series of masterclasses, um, I decided I was going to do three, and this is one of three. Now, for me, when I was thinking about creating new content around LinkedIn, bear in mind, <laughs> I've been teaching LinkedIn strategies for five years now, which is quite a long time. I've been using LinkedIn myself, I don't even know, must be 10, 15 more, maybe eight years um, of using LinkedIn. I really started to develop the strategies that I teach today um, for my own businesses. So when I first started using LinkedIn, I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what it could do for me. I just had a problem that I needed to fix. So if you just go back in time, let's talk, I think this is around 2000 and 10, 9, 10, maybe. So I'm um, recently single, uh, two small children under five. Um, I was a trained reflexologist who loved social media. Um, and I was around 90 grand in personal debt. Um, my uncle had to buy my house so I wouldn't get it repossessed. And I was looking for an answer to my huge problem which was, I can't feed my children. <laughs> like, I, well, I caveat that with, of course, my brilliant, beautiful, amazing family would never gonna let me see me starve or be homeless, which puts me in a very privileged position. But as a 30 odd year old mother of two, um, having my card rejected multiple times in the shop, having to add up a food as I was going round and occasionally getting it wrong, maths isn't my strong point, um, and having to put food back. and just not being able to afford nice things for, my, for myself, for my children, you know, not being able to get my hair cut, not being able to um, get my nails done, not being able to buy things for the kids, like, you know, a lot of secondhand stuff, not being able to pay for them to do things I would like them to do. Days out were quite often a walk, <laughs> let's go to the park, let's have a picnic. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of people will relate to that. I'm sure I wasn't the only one post-financial crash, crash, he was really struggling. But when it came to LinkedIn, I really genuinely knew nothing about it. And you might be watching this, not knowing anything about LinkedIn in either. So this masterclass series um, will be streamed live um, in multiple places. So it's going to um, Facebook, my personal Facebook wall, Facebook group that I own. Uh, it's going on YouTube, it's going on to LinkedIn. So if you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on Facebook thinking, I don't know anything about LinkedIn, then I hear you. And that was exactly me. All I knew was that I had a problem that I needed to fix. I needed to make some money. I couldn't continue swapping my time for money doing reflexology because I had to, I had to get out of the home. You know, I had to be people around. I wasn't able to go out in the evenings like I used to. So I had this kind of challenge of I needed to make some money online um, and I just didn't know where to start. I also had quite severe mental health challenges. I mean, I was very poorly when I was a teenager, I was in the priory, but I also, I had the, I personally had the mindset of very low confidence, a lot of fear and anxiety, um, both in real life and about my situation um, and just wasn't in that kind of confident go-getting let's go and create a business <laughs> mindset I was very much in the fearful scarcity what the hell am I going to do to survive mindset and LinkedIn saved me and LinkedIn really did save me and I went to LinkedIn without really any preconceptions so again we're 10 years on from this story or 12 13 years on from this story now and I'm sure a lot of you, particularly if you follow me, will have heard me talk about LinkedIn. You'll have seen me talk about success on LinkedIn. So maybe it's not such a mystery, but for me then, it was a complete mystery. Um, but I knew I couldn't do a lot of the things that you would normally do to go get business 15 years ago, 13 years ago, which was go to something like a networking event, for example. I knew that I love social media and I wanted to do it for other people because I'd done it for my own business, my, my ex-husband's business as well. And I, I've really seen the power of it. Again, we're talking about the olden days of social media where you could post on Facebook and get people to come knocking on your door, right? Without paying to play. And 
I knew that I could do it for people remotely, which obviously would tick a massive box for me. But I didn't know how to get clients. And to go to something like networking when I had two small children who obviously needed to be up and out to nursery and, and preschool. And um, so logistically, a lot of the times didn't work for me. Didn't have any money. So again, to pay £15 to go to an event, sort of out of the question. We didn't really have online free networking in those days. Um, and I didn't really have the confidence to go and stand up and talk in front of people. So for me, it was really, you know, when I looked at this LinkedIn, I thought, well, my potential clients are in there because it seems to be a lot of business people and people who've got good jobs. Um, and I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to pay anything. I don't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> So a lot of my LinkedIn sort of strategies came from that. I wasn't, I didn't want to have to send lots of messages and ask people to buy from me because I was terrified of the rejection. So instead I thought, how can I use this platform to get people coming to me? Because I'd, I'd done that quite successfully on uh, Facebook and, and Twitter. And, and I sort of had this concept of, right, if you are really clear on what you do and how you help people, and you put yourself out there consistently, which is what I did for my other businesses, and you grow your audience. So like, for example, on Twitter, it was like following people and Facebook, it was asking to be friends with people and LinkedIn's no different. It's just asking to connect with people. So I grow my audience and I show people what I can do and I'm really clear on who it is that I wanna work with, then surely this is gonna work the same. And I just saw it as this huge opportunity and that's really what today's masterclass is about. It's about looking at the opportunity. I want you to forget about the tactics for now. I want you to forget about everything you've seen, read and heard about LinkedIn. I want you to take all those preconceptions and just put them to one side. I'm not saying they're not all true and they're not all right. And you know, there aren't other ways to get leads from LinkedIn than my way. Of course there are. There's you know a million different ways to use LinkedIn. But I want you to get in a winning mindset on LinkedIn in that I want you to take the opportunity, no matter where you are in your business, where you are in your confidence, where you are in your finances, take the opportunity and grab it with both hands. Because for me, when I was thinking about creating this masterclass series, number one thing that came to my head is what stops people? So I've helped thousands of people probably hundreds of thousands, if you think take into account all of my free content, all of the, you know, all of the, the lives that I've done, all of the challenges that I've done, you know, thousands, thousands of people, all the connections that I've got, you know, so all the talks I've done, you know, it's really hard to measure, isn't it, all the stages I've been on. But all, every time I teach my stuff, it's the same. You know, I've got 20,000 people in my free group. I've got, that, you know, 20,000 people in my emails. I've got 36,000 on my, my LinkedIn. And it, all of these people, when every time I teach it, every time I do one of my guest expert recordings, one of my guest expert lives, it's still, to me, I still think it's so simple. And we will be talking about the strategies this week, but uh, in this series, sorry. But it's, it's so simple. So the number one question that's come to me over the last five years of teaching is, why don't people just do it? Why don't people just take my advice, which I, I give freely over and over again, you know, there's no secrets. Why don't they just do it? And the number one comes back to mindset. And for me, when I talk about mindset, I talk about the way people feel about the, what they're doing, the way that people feel about the activity and the way people feel about LinkedIn. So I want you to think and, you know, maybe write some notes on this or just have a, you know, have a thought process around it. Is that how do you actually feel about LinkedIn? When I say LinkedIn, what comes to mind, you know? Is it like, oh, sleazy, salesy, loads of DMs, loads of people pitching to me, people I used to work with, people that I don't want to ever see again. You know, the old me, it's Facebook in a suit. I can't be myself over there. I've got to be a certain person over there. I can't put the stuff that I put out on link, uh, on Facebook or Instagram on there. Like, it's different. It's, it's, it's unknown. It's scary. It's like, think about what it means to you when I say LinkedIn. Like, what word association comes to mind? I've spent five years at events when people say, oh, what do you do? I say, oh, I, now I just say I'm a business coach because it's easier. But I say, oh, yeah, I should be allowed to get these from LinkedIn. And people go, I hate LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm not going to try and persuade you to love LinkedIn in the next five minutes while we're drinking this cup of tea. You know, it's kind of like, okay, cool. We don't have to. I, and I say, well, I love it. Yeah, you because know, I've made 
lots of money from it and that's what makes me love it daily and um, so i want you to just do a little bit of self-examination around well, how does linkedin make you feel and how do you feel which is kind of different about putting yourself out there on linkedin like what is your deepest darkest fear when it comes to putting yourself out on linkedin like the stuff you don't even want to say <laughs> like just say it to yourself you know what's the worst that could happen when you put yourself out on linkedin what are you really afraid of? Might be nothing, and that's cool. You might just say, just give me the strategies, Helen, I'm just gonna go for it. But in my experience, having trained, you know, I've got nearly 2,000 people in my paid program, the LinkedIn Mastermind. We've had over 20,000 people go through my free mini program, the five-day challenge, um, which is the link, it should be the link somewhere on this post. Um, please do get it signed up for it, and it's an experience, if nothing else. Um, why don't all those people just do it? Why do people pay me? To, to come into my program, right? If the training is the training is the training. And there tends to be a, a different, there tends to be three types of people. And again, self-awareness is the key, right? It's self-development. So maybe think about which one you, you might be. So one type of person is that they, they take my advice and they run with it and they just do it. So these can be, these are people who, you know, probably type A personalities who are like, great, Helen's just told me as it is love it let's get on with it let's do it it's just it's a three things to do a day strategy i'm going to do my three things i'm going to just approach it like i would lifting weights i know if i lift weights every day i'm going to build muscle you know i know if i make this choice every day when i eating i'm going to lose weight you know i know if i consistently you know take action in my business i'm going to make money right so i think some people just see it like that maybe 20 percent of people just go cool I'm happy to pay because I want to be in the community and I want to document my success and I want to be amongst like-minded people. I'm going to do it. And I'd say probably 80, 20 of those are men, right? Very direct, very just non-emotional. Cool. So I'm just going to post every day. I'm going to engage with people every day. I'm going to add people every day. Spoiler alert, that is the training. Cool. They just get on with it and do it. And they get great results. And they do it, and this is the thing about mindset, is they do it without any expectation on return on that time investment immediately. Because I think that is kind of what can stop people is that they do all the things and nothing happens immediately, which is normal, right? Like anything. If you lift the weights for a day, nothing happens. You lift the weights for a year, something happens, yeah? You don't eat the chocolate for a day, nothing happens. You don't eat the chocolate for a year, something happens, yeah? It's just cause and effect. You don't get that immediate gratification with many things worth having, right? Let's be honest, you know, if it's an instant quick fix, everyone would do it and it wouldn't be something that's rewarding. So it's the same with LinkedIn. If you post on LinkedIn, nothing happens. <laughs> you add people on LinkedIn, nothing happens, really. You know, you don't get comments, you don't get likes, you don't get engagements. Why would you? Why should you? You know, you don't make money straight away. Sometimes you do, actually. Sometimes it works really well, very quickly. But that's often luck rather than judgment, right? So it's doing the things without the expectation. I'd say that is the winning mindset to have on LinkedIn, actually. It's to do the things without expectation of a result right now. Of course, if you do the things for a year and nothing's happening, then we look at it, right? Or even six months or three months. But doing the things without expectation in return is the real key to making this work. And I would say most marketing, really most social media marketing. So the other type of people are the 20% who buy the thing from me. So they take my advice, whether they get it for free or whether they invest in the program and just don't do the things. And it's frustrating. And, you know, we've sold over two, nearly two and a half, 2.3 or whatever million pounds worth of LinkedIn training, right? So we know that people invest in it. And the reason why people invest in it is because it works, right? If you do the work. Well, 20% of people buy it and do nothing with it. And some of them will just come to me and say, I bought your thing, I didn't do anything with it, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't do it, whatever. I'm just choosing not to do it. Other people kind of don't do the thing, but there's a way that you can improve that mindset. And the way to improve that mindset is to not beat yourself up, right? I am not 100% consistent on LinkedIn every day. Like, it's just, like, you just, most bodybuilders aren't 100% consistent every day. 
most size eight people probably aren't hundred percent consistent every day, but they are probably 80 to 90. You're going to say 80, 20 rules featuring in this masterclass, right? So if you find yourself, as we call it off the bus, so you invest in the program, you invest in my program, you do the challenge, you do it for a bit, you don't get results, you stop doing it, or you can't even get yourself into the mindset of even doing it, something, then it's time to actually become self-aware. And even if you know what to do, and people only ever fail on the basics, if you're not doing the basics, why not? And this has really been the question that's kept me awake for the last five years. It's why don't people do it? And I think it's about the way that people feel in their hearts and minds. So the thought that's going through their heads and the feelings that they're feeling is that they allow that to stop them taking the action. And I do believe that you can overcome that. I do believe you can overcome that. I use this analogy in, so we're running a a VIP accelerator inside my paid program at the moment. So it's like an extra thing that people have joined. There's 12 of us in there. It's, It's really cool. Because these people put their hands up and said, I want to really go for this. I want to be really consistent. I want to accelerate my results. Some people who have fallen off the bus, some people who are new to it, like, no, I really want to, I really want to smash it. And what I said to them was, is using the gym analogy, the gym doesn't care how you feel when you walk in the door. As long as you walk in the door and pick the weights up and put them down, it still works. So you have to overcome how you feel and your negative thoughts about taking action rather than just stop doing the thing. You know, you have to make a choice. Am I going to let the way I feel stop me taking the action, which is going to get me the result? And it's almost like, I don't, so I said to my VIPs, I don't care how you feel. I care that you've done the action. You know, I do care how they feel. Obviously I love them dearly, but you know, LinkedIn doesn't care how you feel. Your audience doesn't care how you feel. Your results don't care how you feel. Only you care. It's an internal thing that's happening with you. So if you make it a non-negotiable and you look at it as a long-term play, you can absolutely transform yourself from somebody who buys something and doesn't do anything with it or learns something and doesn't do anything with it to somebody who's an outrageous executor of knowledge by simply doing the thing. And it's, Simple, but it's not easy. You've got to overcome all of your internal stuff. You've got to have that internal battle every day until it stops becoming a battle and it just becomes second nature. And it will. So you do have to dig deep and you do have to build resilience to develop a winning mindset on LinkedIn. It's just part of it. If it doesn't come naturally to you to just do the thing, no matter how you feel, you're going to have to become a person who can overcome your own stuff in your own head. It's like anything and it will get easier and it does get easier. Just like the nutrition, just like the weights, just like anything like running, for example, like that's such a great example. You know, when you do couch 5k, which I've done and I'm going to do again because I've, again, I've fallen off the wagon of consistency. You know, you literally go from being unable to run for a minute to be able to run for 30 minutes. And it's just by doing the thing, taking the action, one foot and step of the other, despite what's going on in your heart and mind, because it's not your body. Your body is capable of running for 30 minutes. And you can see that at the end of the Couch to 5K program, right? Because it, there's the evidence. But you haven't got the evidence in the beginning. So you have to just do the thing anyway, despite it. And if anyone who's a runner will know, it's as much an internal battle as it is a physical battle. So it's an analogy that I, I like to use because it's, it's so similar. You know, you run for a minute, you can't suddenly run 5k, but you run for two minutes and then three minutes and, you know, however the program, I can't remember how exactly it works, but I remember it jumps from something like eight minutes to 20 and it feels huge. And it's the same with not posting on LinkedIn to posting on LinkedIn. It feels huge until it's not. And then there's everybody in the middle. So in the middle of all of the types of people that I've helped overcome and their own kind of hesitations when it comes to LinkedIn. There's everybody in the middle who where uh, life gets in the way or they're just not sure what to post or they just get bored with it. That's okay too, right? We're all just people having a human experience, right? However, you can become somebody who gets amazing results on LinkedIn by just a bit of tough love with yourself. We're gonna do these things. 
and we're going to make sure we do the three things a day and we're going to trust in the process and we're going to get the results and you absolutely will get the results when i say my strategies work when you do the work i mean that and i can say it with confidence because i have the evidence of thousands and thousands of people who have done that internal battle have dug deep done the work and when i talk about the work i want to talk about what it actually is so you can overcome all of these things that are going on in your head and you can get a result by doing three things a day on LinkedIn. So, well, number one is you've got to have your profile set up. So it talks to your ideal client and obviously we can help you with that. And in the five day challenge, which is completely free, we'll help you get your headline right because that's the most important bit. Profile we do during the program, only because we haven't got time in five days. If you've done the five day challenge, let us know in the comments, but yeah, it's a lot, right? We don't have time to do profile. But we do do headline because that's the bit that follows you around everywhere. And that's the bit we want to get people to click on to come and see who you are and how you help people, what challenges you help people overcome, how much you charge and how people can buy from you, right? Then it becomes, let's do the three things a day, right? So the three things a day, posting, well, three things to do in the order that I normally talk about them, just, just, for, <laughs> just for the sake of people who've seen all my stuff thinking, this is new information, it's not. So the number one thing we do every day is we ask people to connect with us. So we ask people to connect with us so we grow our audience. That's it. And this is what I talk about mindset. We don't get emotionally involved in whether people say yes or no, whether they demand to know how we know them, whether they ignore us, whether they block us, like that's on them. Other people's behavior on LinkedIn is literally none of our business. That is not what we're focusing on. So instead, we just ask to connect with 10 to 15 people a day who look like they could potentially fit your ideal client or have influence over your ideal client. So for example, journalists or influencers in your space. But your core asking to connect each day without writing personalized connection requests should be people who potentially could buy your stuff. And again, we don't overthink about whether they're the exact ideal client or if they've definitely got the problem. We're making the best guess, growing our audience every day because that's the discipline. We're not getting involved in the results. We're just taking the discipline every single day. We're going to ask 10 to 15 people to, uh, to connect with us. And that's how we're going to grow our audience. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to engage publicly with our feed. So the people who are in our world or the people that turn up in our feed, we don't overthink how they've got there. And we just comment on people's posts to make them seem, feel like they've been seen and validate what they're saying and what they're trying to achieve and just being generally supportive useful, kind, non-combative members of the community. If you follow me for a while, you know you will see me in the early years having lots and lots of online arguments with people about my strategies and whether they are right or not. Not like that anymore, <laughs> much more zen. And I advise you to be the same. It's just not worth it for your mental health. It's not worth it for your energy and for your attention and for your time. So what we do instead is we comment on the people's stuff that we see in our feed, just letting them know we've seen their stuff and we are supporting what they're doing. Unless you obviously see their stuff, hate it and don't support it. At that point, why are you connected? Unfollow them. But anyway, that's for another day. And then the third thing of today is we, that we do each day is we post. We put ourselves out there on LinkedIn. Now, there's an urban myth that I force people to post four times a day. I absolutely do not. I ask people to post at least once a day just so you have a presence on there. And we talk about four types of content, pillars of content, stories, video, social proof, and call to action posts. That's it. So if you want to post once a day or once a week, it's up to you. I recommend you post at least once a day so that more people see who you are what you do and how they can buy from you if it sounds simple it's because it is and that's it this is what i'm saying about the training but when i say those things like i want to know from you like how does that make you feel and how does it make you want to like not take action <laughs> yeah that's where the magic happens is in the self assessment of who you are as a person now, Paul and I really need to create a scorecard on this, right? What type of LinkedIn resistor are you, right? <laughs> because for me, everybody has their own resistance. And the answer to overcoming the resistance is to, resistance is to do the thing. And I know people have different personality types, different like businesses, different emotions. And that's fine. I'm there for it all. But you have to become self-aware so that you can overcome that and sometimes it becomes it is just white knuckling it through 
I've done so many things. If someone's going to ask me, and they do on the many, many podcasts I've been on, what would you say is the secret to your success? And I used to say showing up even when you don't feel like it, especially when you don't feel like it. And that is definitely the, the truth. But actually, I think the secret to my success is putting myself through immense amount of pain internally to do things that make me incredibly uncomfortable in the early days. And now people say, oh, you're so confident. You know, you don't care what people say or think. I do, but you know, I have that air, you know. <laughs> I absolutely do. I hate it when people unsubscribe from my stuff, right? I'm a hot mess emotionally still. But like in the early days, I was constantly and continually and outrageously out of my comfort zone. And I was so self-aware. But I just did the things anyway. I kind of, I made a decision that I was in that, in that car. When I was talking about when I thought, before I started this masterclass, when I talked about being sat, well, I was sat in the car outside the shop when I realized I needed to do something about my life. And I made an, an outrageous commitment to myself that I was never going to be in a situation where I couldn't afford to buy food again. And I made a decision to do whatever it took that was legal, obviously. And I knew that as long as I was happy being incredibly uncomfortable, and this is coming from me, who's got, you know, had mental health issues all my life, you know, I'm still, you know, don't, I'm still very fearful of lots of things, <laughs> like, like the underground, for example. You know, so it's not like I suddenly became this butterfly of confidence, you know. But I made a decision that I was never going to be poor again, no matter what it took. And, and if that meant being very, very uncomfortable, being consistent, doing it when I didn't feel like it, putting myself out there, even when people were giving me grief, even when people were telling me I was posting too much and I'm too much of this and too much of that. And, you know, you know, people hating on me and blocking me and talking about me. And it's like, it's kind of like, it's horrible at times, but I just, made that decision and I really want you listening now to make a decision you know am I going to do my three things to do on LinkedIn <laughs> am I going to take the opportunity with both hands like Helen asked me like or not and if you're not that is fine I am not I have helped thousands hundreds of thousands of people get better at LinkedIn my job is kind of done right <laughs> um I've sold millions of pounds worth of this training product like my job is kind of done right my job now it's just to help people grab the opportunity that LinkedIn has and still has and continues to have, and I believe will always continue to have, which is it's completely free. You don't need premium. You can get it if you want it. You don't need it. It's very, very simple to make work, like I've explained today, like in the three-minute segment when I talked about the three things to do a day, right? The opportunity is unparalleled to have a headline and profile that's this long, that really talks to your ideal client, that has embedded featured posts and videos and referrals that people can click on and make sure that they are legit. And a really long piece of copy where you can convert somebody into complete stranger, into browser, into asking to connect with you. It's got all of those functionalities, be able to put out great content, be able to write longer articles, about being able to link out to other platforms and to other um, content that you create. It's on your phone. It's like it's really simple to do. You can search for this. I don't know. I think about eight hundred and fifty million people on there, all searchable by their names, by their job titles, by the the area that you live in. It's such a great opportunity. If you've got a small local business that relies on footfall, it is incredible to build up a small local audience of thirty thousand people. It's unparalleled. If you're selling B two B, where you want to speak to the highest most senior people in the land, you know, that, you know, CEOs are on LinkedIn and they quite often manage their own LinkedIn as well. So it's a really strong way to engage with them and get in contact with them. Like you can speak to journalists, to celebrities, to people who influence thousands, millions of your ideal clients and get amazing opportunities for speaking, for, you know, being on, on telly and in, in the media. Like, I could bang on about this all day. I'm not going to, but I want you to get in the mindset of this is a great opportunity. Forget what I thought about LinkedIn. I'm going to trust Helen on this one, that I can use LinkedIn to generate loads of inbound inquiries for my business 
without sending any DMs, without being out on there for hours, hours on a day, without worrying about what people might do, say and think, without focusing on my likes, comments and engagements because it's just not that kind of platform. Having a really clear way to see it's working by having the profile views there for me to see clocking up, which is great. Means more people are viewing that landing page and I'm just going to throw myself into it no matter how it makes me feel. That's how you get a winning mindset on LinkedIn. I could talk about it all day. But I'm not going to, but I do hope you've got something out of this. I really want to know what your top takeaway is. Please post about it. Please share this for me. The more people I can reach, the more people I can help get into the mindset of using LinkedIn. And once that's really the key to unlocking this stuff, I'll be back with Masterclass 2 and 3, and there'll be more about strategies and tactics and how to convert your LinkedIn activity into cash in your bank. Because I don't know about your mortgage company, but mine will not take LinkedIn likes to pay my mortgage. So it's all. So there's going to be much more practical commercial advice. But this is the most important one in the series, which is why I went first. And I'm hoping you've taken something away from this. And I hope you've done some self-reflection about where you're at and where you want to go and how you can really take those steps to do this. And I'm cheering you on every step of the way. Please post about it. Tag me in it. I really love to see that you've got something from it. Message me. Join the challenge, come and have fun, live with wine every night from the 7th of November. I will see you then. I'll see you for Masterclass 2.